Hello everyone. So in today's class, we are going to learn the next steps in which we are going to identify bad examples of heuristic implementations. What it means is um, to identify issues where, um, uh, you know, the heuristics can be violated, right? And we should be able to identify and rationalize it. So it is going to be a kind of uh, warm up exercise for us before we get into the, you know, complete audit process, right? So, but when we find bad examples, it is not just about that, right? We need to also be able to identify how bad it is, right? It is very bad that the you cannot get your task done or it is bad, but you can still do some kind of work around and you can, you know, uh, work on the, uh, work on uh, some other ways to do the task, right? So how bad it is. So we'll be talking about a process in which we can do that, right? And understand that when we are uh, doing this task, what we are doing is we are trying to learn and internalize all the heuristic principles that are there. And we should be able to distinguish between what is a good example and what is a bad example of heuristics, right? So with that, I'll start sharing my screen. So as you can see, we call it pragmatic product critic process, but today what we are going to learn is the warm up of it, the very, you know, high level version of it. And next time we'll get into the details, but for the warm up, there are eight steps, right? So what, uh, what you do is while you are looking for examples, you try to understand the context of the product, right? Then what you do is understand the user then what you do is whatever is the uh, need of the user you go through the user's journey and accomplish those tasks uh, so that you can fulfill that need right and while doing that you will find a lot of issues right so what you do is you find an issue then you document the scenario for it so that you know you set the context under which that uh, example that you have found is an issue you can rationalize it right then you provide the rationale for the issue, issue as per the scenario. Then the next thing is you need to prioritize the issue. You need to say how bad that is, right? And then you provide recommendations. And let's go, in, uh, let's go and deep dive into each one of these steps. So yes, first you need to understand the context of a product, right? What is this product about? What is the user goal? What is the business goal? Let's take a very simple example. So Practo, that's an online healthcare platform that helps patients find doctors uh, and book appointments uh, based on their requirements. It also allows patients to buy medicine online, right? So if you see the uh, ultimate user goal here is to get health assistance and to get cured conveniently, right? While the business goal is to provide easy and effective health, health assistance and a resolution to masses around India. Right. So once we develop a very fair understanding about uh, what the product is about, we can get to the next step. Right. So the next step is understand the users and their needs. Right. So a, a product may have multiple different user types. Right. Every type will have its own journey. Right. So you need to identify the relevant users who are significant users of uh, that particular product. For example, if you say for Practo, there's a rider who rides the cab, it's not appropriate or relevant for this context, right? Uh, so you need to be relevant and you need, when you are identifying the user, it needs to be relevant and it has to be a significant part of the uh, users that, that are using that product, right? So for example, in Practo, a user can be a general patient right? Someone with a, a, you know, sickness or, you know, something wrong with their health that they want to get uh, cured very, very quickly. And their need can be to find a relevant doctor to consult the health problem in the application, right? Moving on, what you need to do is go through the user's journey and accomplish the tasks, right? Consider yourself as the user and complete the task because in this particular uh, method that you are, you are learning, you are acting as an expert, 
right you must be knowing the nuances of uh, doing this evaluation and then only you can do it very very effectively right so consider yourself as an act uh, as a as the user and complete the task do it multiple times to identify flow level issues right try using all the elements and functionalities across the flow which you think the user will use the most right then for example user might use the search and filters more while searching for a you know uh, searching for a doctor in practo so then while you are doing that you can you may come across multiple issues so what you need to do is you need to document those issues so that you can you know uh, later document in detail and you know you can prioritize them so for example you are uh, what you are saying here is the system is not helping the user to ensure the correctness of the inputs before proceeding to the next step so what you came across is you entered the full name you entered the phone number you entered the password it says very weak so it will it is not going to accept it but it is still letting you perform the action and send otp right so that's a problem it should not uh, allow you to do that before the password is appropriate right so once you do it you document this scenario because you are communicating it to the other person and you should be able to communicate it very very effectively and the first step to do that is uh, to set the context right for which you are using the scenario right <clears throat> so a scenario consists of uh, context goal and action so the context is in what context user wants to use the product right the goal is what does the user want to accomplish when they are doing it right and action is what does the user do with the product to achieve that goal that you have set right an example can be purnima has been suffering from fevers in 3 days she is worried about finding a good doctor right to get the best treatment possible and recover quickly right so she discovers the practo application through google <clears throat> right now the goal is she wants to create an account quickly without mistakes so that she can start looking for a doctor right so for this particular issue the main goal here is to create an account quickly without making any mistakes right and we'll evaluate for this goal how is the issue is that very bad or not right so the action is hence she visit, visits practo and starts entering her details to create an account so the next step is provide the rational for the issue right identify what heuristic is being violated right so as you can see here the design is not able to prevent the error from happening so what you say is error prevention and you provide your rational because the system does not uh, system allows the user to click on the cta with, uh, which triggers an error as the password strength is still not appropriate at this point of time which could have been prevented right so it is clearly you are mentioning the rational right so that there is no second guess and there can be multiple heuristics violated but in that case also you'll need to be able to identify what is the primary heuristic that is being violated the root cause so that once you fix it it will be fixed for good right next step is very very important prioritize the issue right for which you can use this very easy scale right uh because you need to say how bad it is right uh, for which you can use this severity rating scale right and this scale is going to be dependent based on probability and impact right probability means how many users are likely to come across that issue right is it high is it medium it is low or is it low and the impact of it so uh, a low impact would be that they should feel uh, irritated but uh, uh, they should be able to do the task they should be able to accomplish the uh, accomplish the goal somehow but when you say impact is high right that means that no matter what they are doing they are not able to accomplish the goal with uh, even if the functionality is there right so you can see all this uh, five different scales right so the first is cosmetic or detail defects that are you know distracting to customers right so the probability is low 
the impact is low next you have is irritant it means that okay you feel irritated it needs to be fixed unless extra time is available on the project right so probability can be medium you know some users might be able to uh, might be facing it not all but the impact is still very very low right the third is minor usability problem now it is a usability problem because the probability of people coming across this issue can be medium or high but the impact is medium that means that you're not able to do that task uh, easily or uh, in a straightforward manner you'll have to do some work around to be able to accomplish your goal right so that is the problem and we'll look at a uh, you know few examples too major usability problem means that uh, the probability is very high the impact is can also be medium or high can be any combination so it is like very important uh, to fix otherwise you won't be able to do uh, your task or it will be very difficult to do now the five is a usability catastrophe it is very important to fix because uh, the probability of, uh, of it is high every user is going to face that issue and the impact is high that means that you are not you are going to not able to uh, accomplish your goal right no matter what you do so that is how you can use this scale to prioritize the issue right now let's uh, uh, look at the example here we said uh, it's a error prevention issue right what we are rating it as a minor usability issue because the probability of users making this mistake is medium and the impact of it is not severe as users will be uh, able to st uh, still achieve the goal uh through a workaround so what they'll do is once they you know click on send otp they'll be uh, you know they can still be notified uh, notified that uh, you know the password is very weak please fix it right so it's a problem uh, but they'll still be able to correct it and uh, uh, create their account right now the last step is provide recommendations so you should be able to add relevant and appropriate design recommendations so that the addition process uh, can get a direction on how the problem can be solved. So understand the difference between a recommendation and a solution. So you should not provide a solution because for a problem, there can be n number of solutions. At this point of time, you are worried about identifying the problem and not the solution, right? But when you provide a recommendation, it gives you a direction so that, you know, uh, you can solve it later, right? So, for example, when you say add an error message for wrong passwords is a solution, right? Rather, if you can say help users recognize the possible error before performing an action, it's a recommendation. It's not a direct solution for which there can be multiple solutions that can be identified later when you do your ideation process, right? So in our example, what we can say is, restrict the user to perform an action until all inputs are appropriate, right? Now for that, you can do whatever. You can provide an error message or you can highlight that particular section or you can also do some kind of validation there. So the solution can be anything, but you're giving a direction to the user so that they can go ahead and do it, right? So that is how you document a particular issue when you're looking for violations across the web, right? And this is a warm up exercise, right? That we are going to do for at this point of time, right? So this is the complete process. Uh, you need to be able to, you know, specify the scenario very, very uh, contextually and clearly. You know, should be able to identify appropriate, rational, and document it. You need to. Uh, you know, identify appropriate sever severity rating and you have to provide recommendation that is very, very crisp, clear, uh, not very specific to solution, but a direction and it has to be very, very actionable, right? Now, in some case, a uh, JPG image works, right? But in a lot of cases, you might need to show a complete GIF to show that, okay, the issue is there or not right uh, to be able uh, so that the other person can understand right what's going on in that particular example or you might also use a video so the media that you are using 
to show uh, or you know uh, present an issue should be appropriate right in some cases static image like jpeg works in some cases it does not so you might want to use gif and all so that's it about this class and uh, we'll be doing some quiz later uh, and i'll see you later uh, i'll see you there Thank you.